Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to talk about what I consider to be world's easiest reptile to take care of. I personally have two of them and they're really easy to take care of. Now before we begin, if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new on the channel, well, you're really missing out. You should press the subscribe button and the bell button to get my latest notification. Otherwise, you're going to lose me in the YouTube feed forever. <laughs> All right, let's begin. What do I consider to be world's easiest reptile to take care of? And I mean, it requires the least care than any other reptile that I've encountered. And I had a few of them. What it is? It's the Russian or Horsefield tortoise. Yes, these tortoises are so cool and so easy to take care of. And I happen to have two of them, so let's see them. Um, so we're going to start category by category, uh, habitat, care, breeding, so on. Uh, just to show you really step by step why they are the easiest tortoise to take care of and why you should get one, probably, if you want one. <laughs> All right, let's begin with their habitat. Uh, horse field says it itself. Uh, they come from horse fields or steppes of southern Russia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, all these stands below Russia, they have those horse field tortoises in them and they like a uh, flat grassy plains or slightly mountainous terrain. That's why they have big claws. Like if you look at the Russian tortoise, they have big, big claws in the front and in the back. It's really because they're amazing diggers, amazing climbers, amazing walkers. They can like plow through anything. Uh, they come from a quite cold climate. They're actually one of the coldest climate uh, tortoise out there. So they can resist temperatures below zero in the winter when they hibernate, which is another subject we're going to cover soon. Uh, so they can actually uh, withstand high temperatures in the summer and very cold ones in the winter. And they're extremely adaptive. They're very minimal requirement of equipment. Um, they're also low requirement in water. A lot of people like to soak them daily or weekly um, on top of them having a water dish. Uh, in two years that I had Olivia Sausage Paws, which is my bigger tur turtle tortoise. Um, actually, a tortoise is a turtle, but a turtle is not a tortoise. Funny enough, eh? So in those two years that I have Olivia, I never sit, seen her take a single sip of water. Never. She never drank water. So what I do, I usually just mist her and I leave some water wherever and I still don't see her going it. So there's super minimal requirement of water. Um, a lot of people will disagree and say, hey, you have to soak them every day for their shell to be perfect. Uh, sure, if you feel like doing that, you can do that. But based on my experience of them, you don't really need to soak them all that often. Uh, maybe once every two weeks to a month. And But you can mist them with like a little sprayer daily if you feel like it just to mimic the rain or the morning mist. Uh, so that's their habitat. They're super adaptive. Uh, diet. Diet is even easier. Literally, they only eat um, leaves, leafy greens, and flowers. Um, you can feed them a little bit of fruit and berries, but it's not good for them because of the sugar content. There's actually a list of foods that you can feed your Russian tortoise that I'll add below the video. But mainly, they really love dandelions, they love eating other flowers, uh, they like just eating weeds, in my opinion. Uh, so if you get can get them from the grocery, they uh, like romaine lettuce, um, any other types of lettuce they really like. They like um, a mix of leafy greens. One thing to avoid though is um, spinach and kale in moderation because it deprives their bodies of calcium. There's a whole research behind that. Just take my word on it. Don't go too crazy on the kale and the spinach. They they don't really do too well on that. And that's not part of their natural diet. You're safer staying with the weeds in your garden than feeding them that. And they'll know by themselves what to eat. Um, but dandelions is their top favorite. And uh, speaking of... Uh, feeding. Uh, they do require calcium supplementation, so you either have to sprinkle it 
on their food. It's a powder of calcium and D3. You have to. Uh, the D3 is just in case they don't get enough sunlight during the year. Uh, you have to add it um, within the calcium powder. So you just sprinkle it either daily or weekly. Don't like overdo it. Like anything, don't overdo it. Okay. Sometimes caring too much can kill your pet. So don't overdo it. Um, you can leave them a cuddle bone inside of their enclosure. Mine has never touched it. You can leave also the aloe vera block. Um, I think it's made by reptile something. I'll add the, the photo right there. And mine never touched that either, but some tortoises like it. What they do eat in the nature is actually uh, dead animal bones and the scat of carnivorous animals. Basically, calcium. Like just regular calcium, either in the poo of the carnivorous animals or uh, within the bones of dead animals. It's very strange to see. You can even, if your um, enclosure is outside and you have some rocks, you might notice that your tortoise, especially the females, the females that are about to lay eggs or something like that, uh, they go for small um, rocks and pebbles. Don't worry too much. Like They're not going to kill themselves. They're literally just looking for extra calcium. And sometimes cuddle bone is just not their preference. So that's for uh, the diet. Behavioral, um, male, female. Well, when you're keeping um, more than one tortoise, I suggest never to put two males together because this will be a bloodbath. They're quite territorial and aggressive, so don't put two males together. You can put two females together uh, or multiple females together if it's a big enclosure, uh, but really go um, with one and then add another one and see how it goes before you add like four and they all don't get along. Uh, they're quite solitary beings, so they don't always enjoy being amongst their own unless it's breeding season. Um, I have a male and a female that get along surprisingly super well, so if that works for you, that's amazing, great. Uh, but during breeding season, the male can be a little too insistent, so you do need to have either separate hides or separate them or just have a big enough territory that they can get away from each other. Mind you, mine were a little bit like that in the beginning and after a week or two, they calm down or if they had like, they don't like have enormous amounts of energy. So it lasts maybe an hour or two and they both fall asleep after. So, oh yeah, that's another thing about Russian tortoises. It's not a pet that you can expect to um, always be with you. In fact, they don't like to be cuddled. Um, they have the energy span of about three to five hours maximum a day, which makes them so easy. And in the winter, when they do hibernate, which is a subject we'll come back to, there's, they literally don't exist. So uh, it's three to five hours a day that they really will be active. Um, I did hear of some uh, tortoises being more cuddly, like to be taken and held, um, but most tortoises, when they're being manipulated or just lifted, they will start uh, peeing on you and pooping on you. And it's actually quite dangerous uh, for them if they completely empty their bladder on you. Um, it's a defense mechanism, so that will make them dehydrated. Uh, the more you play with them, the more they do that on you, the more they will dehydrate themselves. So I don't suggest to force your tortoise into interaction. It's more of an observation animal. So observe rather than take it out and move it around and they don't like that stuff. So it's better just to leave it in the enclosure or a bigger enclosure or at least let a room in your house, but don't try to play with his paws and pet his head. If it lets you do that, great. You're lucky with your tortoise, but most most Russian tortoises do not like that, and mine are one of those. They like to be hand-fed, but don't start sticking your fingers at them. Yeah, don't just walk around with them. Don't put them on your chest because you're going to have some poo on you eventually. So that's their behavior. Not two males together. Females, maybe. Male and female together, maybe. Now, as it... It is for the lifespan, well, it's a big commitment. It's not as the sulcatas or other um, giant types of tortoises, but they still have a lifespan of 40 to 50 or more years. So if you're getting a little Johnny a tortoise, little Johnny might have to put that in his uh, 
um, what's it called? <laughs> when you die, the uh, the death certificate. I give my tortoise to my grandchildren. That would be the type of commitment. It's kind of like getting um, a large parrot. It will be with you for most of your life. And uh, they rarely have any type of um, congenital disease unless you really don't take good care of them. Like they might end up with um, bone disease, um, brittle bones. If they don't, don't get proper nutrition and proper UV, that means good sunlight or good lighting. Um, yeah, you need to really take good care of them in that aspect. They absolutely need a UVB and UVA light bulb at all time. Uh, during winter, not as much because you can or cannot make them hibernate. But as the temperature is lower, um, they naturally will sleep longer and eat less, uh, at least the adults. So if you come from a colder climate, I'm in Canada, Montreal, so six months out of the year, I don't really see my tortoises that much. They will come up and nibble a little bit on some lettuce poo once a week and go back to sleep and there's no interaction until at least March. So from, let's say, October to March, you can or cannot choose to make them hibernate. Um, there's several ways of making them hibernate. I'll put it links below uh, just so you know how to make your tortoise hibernate. Or I'll make another video about that further on in the future, but mine just naturally hibernate in their um, enclosure by themselves, uh, just Put the lights for maybe three hours a day instead of five to six and they will naturally hibernate that way. So that makes them ultra easy because six months out of the year, you don't get to see them too much and you don't need to take care of them all that much. And if they're in complete hibernation and you know how to do that, then you have literally nothing to do for six months out of the year. And if you live in warmer clients, uh, climates, well, then... The thing is their lifespan is in correlation with uh, their hibernation. The more times they will go in hibernation, the longer they will live with you. So if you never make them hibernate and you live in Florida, chances are they will not live as long with you. So it's really important the aspect of hibernation. You can use a wine cooler or any other type of cooling devices such as a refrigerator or something like that to make them hibernate. So now that we covered that, let's go into breeding. So breeding naturally occurs in the Northern Hemisphere uh, between the month of March and the month of July, okay? When the soil unfreezes and right before it gets dry again. Why I'm saying that? They can only dig uh, a burrow for their eggs or a nest when the soil is moist and easy to dig inside. The moment it starts to dry out more in July, August, September, they can no longer go through the soil and lay their eggs. Also, the eggs take 90 days to 120 days to hatch, uh, which is a good uh, three months. So it has to be earlier in the season. They do uh, actually two batches. They will lay once earlier and once a little further down in the summer months. Uh, just as a preventative survival skill, they lay two batches in the summer. Um, mature females, depending on their size, can have from 2 to 12 eggs. 12, it's rare. Uh, I usually see 2 to 6. So that's what you can expect. Females from the wild will wait until 15 to 20 years old to breed. That's when they reach the full size. But a well-fed female in um, a domestic environment can lay within the first 10 years of her life, even like less than that, maybe eight, 10. So yes, it's still, it's still a while before your female can lay eggs if you got them as a baby. But uh, it's less long than if it was like a wild female in the wild. Um, as for the mating ritual, this is quite interesting actually. Um, the male will start bopping his head like that next to the female and will first bite the front paws and then go in the back and bite the ass cheeks and the paws. Uh, not to be worried, it doesn't really hurt them because they have quite thick scales around there, uh, but it's to um, stimulate ovulation in the female. So he basically bites her to get her in the mood. That's the ways. It's a little weird, but it works for them. Um, so, and after that has happened for her, 
uh, he will mount and it's one of the cutest little things you've ever seen. They open their mouth and they go like <laughs> I will try to link some videos to a mating ritual of tortoises. Like it's so funny because they never make noise except when they breed and it sounds like a little person just going like <laughs> So that's how they breed and they usually lay eggs within a week or two after. So if you want babies, that's how it's done. And if the male is too insistent after like three weeks of biting her, maybe give them a time out. Not that I've seen it necessarily in my case with my couple, but it could be necessary sometimes. So if you're building them an enclosure, uh, an indoor enclosure, usually called tortoise table, it has to be quite big still, okay? It le at least needs to be two feet by three feet just to give the tortoise some space to move, a space for the hide, a space for the food, a space for basking, you know? They still really enjoy digging and climbing, so it has to be somewhat interactive, otherwise your tortoise is going to be bored. And when I speak of interactive, did you know that tortoises have the mental age of a seven-year-old? So they're actually more mature than your dog or your cat. But we don't really need, we don't really know the age of cats because they're so grumpy most of the time, you know. <laughs> I love cats, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, they're quite intelligent beings. So they need mental stimulation. They need, uh, sometimes you can put like um, a little ball inside. They'll roll it around. Yes, yeah, Stella. <laughs> so... Um, they need absolutely one hide and it has to be pitch black in that hide, okay? Um, they need a surface for eating their food that has to be a rocky surface. Sorry, we're dealing with Stella. Hi. <laughs> She's my beauty. Okay, Stella. So, as for the enclosure, I suggest two hides. Uh, just to give them some variety, uh, one hide could be a little darker, one a little warmer. So give them two hides, one cool one, one warmer one, close by to the basking light. They need a basking light of UVA or and UVB, so you can add two basking lights. It's even better. Uh, not too warm. It shouldn't be above like 76 to 80 Fahrenheit, um, Celsius 25 to 28. I do believe I did the conversion right. Uh, like I said, they're Southern Russia tortoises, so they don't expect to be in warm water clients. They're not a tropical animal whatsoever, but they do need some warmth and UVA, UVB, just to absorb uh, the nutrients in their food and grow a proper shell. It's the most important, otherwise they will have um, bone disease and the bones won't be able to hold them up. They won't be able to walk or whatsoever. So what kind of substrate? Um, ah, it's debatable. Everyone uh, has their own theories. Um, but I'll give you just the substrates you can use. You could use Echo Earth or Earth. You could use peat moss. You could use um, some sand. I like to use sand, actually. Um, some like to use just dirt. Um, this is what their natural habitat is like. Rocky, mountainous, dirt, soil, or sand. So that's what I suggest. Um, you can try other substrates. Uh, mind you, I wouldn't want them to eat like um, cedar bark or something like that. Um, so stay with the normal, natural things that they come from. So mainly dirt. Um, also, I do enjoy putting some branches inside, big logs, just for them to crawl over. Uh, they really like to dig either underneath or go over and some rocks to sharpen the nails because the nails will get super long if they don't get to use them. It's just like any other animal. They need to be able to use their nails. Um, yeah, they need to be able to dig also, so it has to be at least four to five inches deep for them to properly enjoy the digging process um, and borrow on themselves. If they cannot borrow themselves, they get very stressed and they just dig at the glass or dig at the wood. You can either make your enclosure out of wood 
or a giant Tupperware or uh, one of those terrariums. They don't really enjoy glass because they don't understand the concept of seeing through glass. They think they can go through glass, but uh, you can black it out with some background on the outside and things like that. So have I covered everything? I hope I have. I'm still brainstorming to see if I thought of everything. Oh, when it comes to breeding, um, to know that your female is about to lay is that she will start digging with her back paws a hole. Uh, for like the incubation, ta 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 ta, if you want to incubate it yourself, I'll try to make a separate video about it uh, because yeah it's a whole subject to itself how to incubate the babies and rear them and take them out and the proper humidity that's a whole video to itself but as for being the easiest raptor in the world i mean they don't need anything extreme they sleep six months out of the year they eat only vegetables and vegetables you can literally fetch in your backyard um they're not really prone to disease but they do get um intestinal worms so make sure to deworm your tortoise when you get it I, I guess just bring it to a vet for a stool sample before you start like putting medication in it that's very important um they're easy going uh, they live a long time they don't require cuddles <laughs> which is perfect if you're not a super sensitive person like me i just hi what's up how's your day tortoise um and yeah they're they're just easy to feed to have um they're very resistant to temperature changes. They're very resistant to climate changes. The only thing they don't like is water. They don't like humidity. So don't soak them too often. Don't make their substrate super wet. Um, I mean, don't drown them. <laughs> you know, um, very easy. So if you have any experiences with Russian tortoises, share your comments below. Feel free. I answer to most of the comments. And if you have more advices share them also if you have your own russian tortoise send me links below i'd love to see your enclosures and your tortoises and oh yeah i'm about to finish the video i forgot to say if you have an outdoor enclosure mate you better make it like six foot into the earth okay you have to put the enclosure deep into the earth at least six sorry not not feet six inches into it because they will dig under and escape like my archie did i used to have another male before and he dug underneath the enclosure and he escaped into the wilderness so they can climb over so make it at least 10 to 20 inches high the outdoor enclosure and six inches deep into your ground and actually just put rocks on the inside and rocks on the outside just to Make sure they don't dig out of it because they are the best escape artists. They're the best tortoises at escaping your outdoor enclosures. And make sure it's not in high sun all day. Make sure there's some shade because they will cook. You don't want them to cook. Make sure to have hides. Make sure to put a net if you have predators in the area. Make sure to bring them back in before the night if you have predators in the area. Just bring them back in because honestly, people steal those. I've heard of people stealing those. So don't leave your tortoises outside. They're an expensive pet to have and you don't want people coming in your garden, taking them out or raccoons stealing and eating them or those squirrels that can eat them also. So within your supervision, outside enclosure, I like to also put a little red sticker on them just in case they escape and then just to have a visual because they bury into the earth and they're very hard to see after that. So I think that's it guys. All right. Thank you so much for watching and hope you liked that video and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and I'll see you soon then. All right. Bye.